Welcome to Orange Weekly presented by Kraus Health alongside Mike Waters. Via Zoom, I'm Brent Dax. Coming up, we'll hear from Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim on how practice time, or lack thereof, has affected the season so far for the Orange as they get ready for the Boston College Eagles. We'll also offer a preview of that matchup, Syracuse's first ACC game of the 2020-21 season. But Mike, uh, coming off that game against Rutgers on Tuesday night, a big non-conference matchup, Syracuse Hung in there for a while, but eventually Rutgers goes on a 17-4 run at the end to pull out that victory over Syracuse. But I'll tell you what, if Quincy Garrier is hitting three-pointers now, I'm in. I I love seeing this development from this kid. And we've heard this, Mike, right? Like, he does it in practice, but he only had three all of last year. He goes and puts up three in one game against Rutgers Tuesday night. Yeah, you're right. Three out of 24 last season. So, you know, that, that's uh, 12.5%, uh, which is why he didn't get to take any more than 24. Uh, you know, they, they, they put him on lockdown at a certain point from three-point range last year. But they said all along, listen, he can shoot. We see it in practice. Is it great? No. Is it Buddy Beheim level? No, but he can shoot. And they were hoping that it, he would add that to his game this year. And I like it, too, uh, because it's going to help you again open up the floor. I don't want to see him fall in love with it, though because he is a six foot seven, 220 pound freak. I want him inside in the paint. When that floor is opened up for him, I want him to take his man inside and go and go to the basket and score and draw fouls and get in ones and get the other team in foul trouble. Now, if he wants to take four, three pointers in a game, I'm all for it. You know, we'll see what happens. Um, So yeah, it's a great sign for him in his development as a player, but you know, he can't get away from his bread and butter, which is, you know, the, his low post play uh, in his ability to get offensive rebounds and everything. Syracuse needs it because they didn't rebound well last night. Um, it wasn't Quincy's fault necessarily, but uh, he's the guy that's going to help you the most there. Yeah, and you don't want Quincy Guerrier leading the team in three-point shooting, which was the case against Rutgers. And obviously when Buddy Beheim comes back on Saturday, that will help things. But the other guy you focus on there, Mike, is Joe Girard. And Gerard struggled again. He struggled on the defensive end. Kadari Richmond comes in and, and is making plays, seven assists on the night, maybe a five steals as well on the defensive end. And now you're kind of at that range where are we going to see a little bit more of that Kadari Beheim backcourt? What is Joe Gerard's role right now? I mean, he's going to play. It's not like he bury him on the bench, but is it a starting role at this point? Or does Jim have to consider taking him off the bench a little bit more? You know, I want to see Joe get a chance to play with his returning backcourt partner, Buddy Beheim. Uh, we've only seen it in one game. It was the opener against Bryant, where the team had that 12 or 14 day layoff and then got one practice in before playing Bryant. And nobody played good against Bryant. I know Joe didn't shoot well that day, and it's always easy to notice bad shooting, but there were a lot of problems. You know, they were down to, to Bryant, uh, you know, by 13 points at one point. So, and then since then, Buddy hasn't played. Um, so, you know, I want to see Joe with Buddy. Uh, I want to see Joe get a chance, more chances to get his legs underneath him. And we'll see where it goes. You know, here's the thing. It's, it's funny about expectations. We don't expect much from Kadari Richmond coming into the season. And we do, of course, of Joe Girard. You know, last night at Rutgers, Joe Girard was one of six from three-point range. And Kadari was one for five. And you mentioned Kadari had those seven assists. Joe had six. And Joe only had two turnovers. You know, the problem and you mentioned it, is defense. Joe's defense has not been good. And I don't know if it's because of the lack of practice time. I don't know if it's because of uh, the weight that he added. Uh, you know, he was supposed to get stronger with some muscle. I don't know if that's affecting his, uh, you know, his lateral movement. But he can't keep getting beat on defense. That's got to change. Kadari has shown that he's a pretty good defender out there. He's bigger. He's longer. Uh, so you know, if defense is the issue, because I don't really think the offensive end is, is as big an issue as, as fans are making it out to be. But the defensive end is where Jim Beheim will, will make a change if he feels it's necessary. Because we've that's seen always, that in the past. That's always the big factor, right? Either your ticket to the bench or your ticket off the bench if you know what you're doing on defense. You mentioned it a moment ago, Mike, Buddy Beheim. He'll be back on Saturday in that backcourt with Joe. Syracuse could certainly use his three-point shooting. And Syracuse really misses Barama Sidibe at this point. And that's not a knock on Marek Dolja. I think he's holding his own in the middle. Only had three fouls against Rutgers after he picked up a few quick ones. You think, oh boy, here we go. And as Jim Beheim said at the press conference afterwards, he doesn't think any of the younger centers 
are ready to come in and contribute here. So I still want to ask the question, though, how much does Syracuse miss Buddy and Barama at this point? Oh, I, I, I think they miss them both uh, immensely. I mean, we mentioned, you know, uh, your Buddy and what he can do for you offensively there, you know, his three-point shooting. You look at last night's game. You know, Quincy Guerrier made as many threes as Alan Griffin, Joe Girard, and Kadari Richmond combined. They're not good. It's great for Quincy. It's bad for Syracuse. <laughs> so, you know, uh, Buddy can change that. Buddy's a good shooter. Buddy gets open looks. You know, odds are he's going to make them or at least gives you another guy who you think can. So, yeah, they miss him. They miss him in depth-wise. Uh, Alan Griffin, you know, at 6'5", you'd think Alan Griffin could be more of a guard, but he – he doesn't play like a guard. There were many times last night offensively where the court got unbalanced because Allen wanted to go for those offensive rebounds. And you want him to if he's a small forward. But if Kadari Richmond has just driven in the lane, Allen Griffin has to stay back. Rutgers got a ton of fast break points, and several times it was when Allen was at the two. So I like Allen at the three. Buddy comes back, you have your three guards back there that you can rotate. Barama, you mentioned it. Uh, you know, the young centers. You know, we all want to see one of them step forward, but it doesn't appear any of them's quite there yet. You know, Barama gives you the ability to make Marek your backup center. And Jim pointed out last night, Quincy and, and Allen at the forward spots, neither one's a, you know, a, a guy who they're, they're not coming in and helping defensively when the guards are getting beat. Uh, Marek as a defensive forward is really good at six foot 10 and long arms and all that. He comes in, he can help Barama defensively inside. Uh, whereas, you know, Marek, when he's at center, he doesn't have a Marek at forward to kind of help him in there as well. So again, it's just going to add to your depth of your rotation. You know, people last night early in the game were saying to me on Twitter, you know, Beheim needs to play his bench. And I'm like, he's got two starters out. You know, his, his bench is in the game already. Who do you want him to go to? Uh, so, you know, so you get Barama and Buddy back, all of a sudden you've got a good eight, nine man rotation if he wants to use it. And one of those youngsters off the bench, uh, Woody Newton, looking pretty darn good for the Orange. Maybe he could be a spark going I forward. I agree. Yeah, you know, but, uh, Woody shows no fear right now. He believes he can play and he's getting out there. So, you know, as, as Buddy and then eventually Barama come back, I, I, I hope that Woody can be a guy who continues to stay in the rotation a little bit. He, he's, he can make threes. He's got good size. Um, you know, it's, it's kind of reminds me of when Billy Edelman was out at the beginning of the 2003 season, Josh Pace got some extended playing time and Josh was only a sophomore that year. And he proved to Jim Beheim that he deserved time. So even when Billy came back, Josh continued to play and was a, a really key man off the bench for that team. You bring up 2003. That's the last time Syracuse had lost at the Rutgers athletic center uh, before Tuesday night. Well, Syracuse is going to get a little ACC flavor early in the schedule here, Mike. The Boston College Eagles coming up next. We'll preview that matchup after we hear from Syracuse head coach Jim Beheim during Syracuse Soundbites. It's, it's hurt us all along. And we don't get a lot of prep time for BC because we have to take Wednesday off. It's a mandatory day off. So we have two days of prep time for Boston College. No, the, you know, the 20 days, we won't get that back and. Well, after Boston College, we have a week. So we hopefully will, that will help us. But you never get that back. Those 20 days, you never get them back. That was a lot. Well, ready or not, here we go, Mike. It's ACC play already for the Orange. They get Boston College this Saturday. And with this unique schedule, of course, not as many non-conference games, this is pretty much it for the Orange. They get BC. There's a game against Buffalo wedged in there. I mean, who knows if they'll add a game or two to the non-conference slate, but uh, it's pretty much all ACC from here on out. And we're in the middle of December. That's, it's pretty unique. Yeah. But if you remember last year, Syracuse opened the whole season with a home game against Virginia. Right. So having four uh, games leading into BC is actually a good thing for them. Um, it'll be interesting on Saturday, uh, Boston college, is a tough team, even though their record doesn't reflect it right now. They've only got one win, but they went to Minnesota on Tuesday night as part of the ACC Big Ten Challenge, and they gave Minnesota a game. BC really had opportunities to win and wound up losing in overtime. Uh, but they got some guards that are going to test the perimeter of Syracuse's zone. Jay Heath and Winston Tabs. Keep your eyes on those guys. They can shoot it both from deep. Uh, so, like, the, the, the defenders on the perimeter – they can't think they're defending the shooter if they're at the three-point line because Jay Heath and, and Winston Tabs will both pull up 
from two or three feet beyond that line. And then they got some other guys uh, like CJ Felder who can play. Uh, they got a, a transfer from Providence who can play. Uh, his kid brother, DeMar Langford, it, it gives them a kind of a six foot, six, seven athletic small forward that BC's really lacked in, in years past. So um, I think it's a tough matchup for Syracuse, and especially since, you know, they will get Buddy back, but they're still going to be minus Barama. And the other interesting thing, Mike, is they passed the first test, right, of going on the road. That's going to be something to keep an eye on. COVID-19 has already affected Syracuse basketball uh, a couple of times here in the early going. How will travel affect things? And as you know, Mike, it's not like players go into, you know, visiting spots and they're out sightseeing and doing a bunch of things. They basically just hang out in their rooms in the hotel and just kind of get ready for the game, right? It's always been an in and out process for the most part, but it's a little more restricted now on the road. But uh, so far, so good against Rutgers. We'll see how it goes against Boston College and as the ACC schedule builds here. Yeah, we'll see. You know, that whole traveling aspect, you know, they do try to limit uh, where they're going and they've lim they're limiting the travel party this year. But you're still getting on a plane and you're still getting on a bus when you get there and you're still going to a hotel. And are the players going to the weight room? Is that organized? You know, they clean it, but even still it, it, it's exposure out there. So, you know, the, the travel is the one thing that, that, that teams and schools are, are, are really worried about. Um, you know, now that students are gone from campus and the players are pretty much alone on campuses. So one concern is over, but the travel aspect is, is certainly something that we're gonna have to keep an eye on as we go through this entire season. That is Orange Weekly presented by Krause Health. For Mike Waters, I'm Brent Axe. We'll talk to you next time.